All right, thought I had some fun today. Um, have the kit here. If you can read that, it says Grand Granddad Bob's Crystal Radio Set. A crystal radio. Oh my goodness! I remember having a crystal radio when I was really, really small. My dad built me one. Um, maybe that's why where I got the interest in uh, interest in electronics. But uh, yeah, let's get it onto a tray. Nice. All right. About Granddad Bob. Granddad Bob, who never did like being called Robert, has served in the electronics field for 56 years, but he's still learning every day. Hey, sounds like me. And he served as an electrician who moved into electronics because of interest. He's married. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, I like Bob already. Uh, coil winding data. Oh, so we get to wind some coils. Cool. Uh, this looks like it's from England because there's Norwich. Been to Norwich before. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, the aerial. Hey, somebody's calling an aerial instead of an antenna. Does an aerial, can, can an aerial only be a single wire or can it be a whole antenna? I don't know. I got to look that up. Um, earth tuning capacitor, earpiece. Oh, uh, there's some big winding we have to make. Uh, all right. Looks like I should read this through and uh, become more acquainted with the uh, coil we're going to have to wind. Looks like it needs to have a, some type of thing to wind it onto. Looks like it comes with an aerial. That looks like an aerial to me. Wow, look at all the wire. Maybe this is, these are both aerials. Maybe one's a ground. Ah, this is probably it's green. It's probably a ground. And this is probably the aerial tuning capacitor. And this is probably the coil. There's not much to an AM crystal set, right? It's a coil and a, 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 a diode. The one that I had as a kid had a little block of something. I don't know if it was germanium or something, and it had a little cat's whisker, and you, you touched the cat whisker onto the crystal and made it into a diode, but this one looks like it's got real diodes. Probably has a, like a one in, what are they, one in 34s? Is that what a, if I remember that right? Hardly ever use them. It's got two of them, interesting. Hmm. Don't know why two. Got a little tuning knob for the uh, capacitor. And comes with a really old school earpiece. Not a not an earphone, an earpiece. Yeah. These were all the rage. They'd always got wax in them. <laughs> They'd always turn really yellow and ooky because all your all your earwax would jam into these things. Um, receiver. Taiwan. All right. And uh, I remember the one, um, I had a second crystal set. Uh, the one that my dad built was kind of big. The coils were like on a toilet roll, that kind of thing. Um, I had a second one, though, that was shaped like a little spaceship. And it had a little tuning coil in it. And it didn't have an antenna, but it had an alligator clip. And I would clip it onto my uh, bunk bed. And my bunk bed would add would act as the antenna. And I could, I could receive all kinds of stuff with it. That was really, really cool. Anyway, like I said, yeah, not much in this kit, right? <laughs> not much. Uh, this is just wire and some connectors. This is just wire and the, uh, I guess this is one of the main components here is the uh, tuning capacitor. All right, and then the wire. So really, that, that, and that is the radio. That's, that's it. That's all you need for a radio. Very, very cool. All right, let's get it built. So I read up on it. Uh, here's the coil winding data. And uh, you can um, wind it either onto a 1.75 uh, diameter core or a 2 inch diameter core. And the reason they chose these diameters is they said that aerosol cans were those sizes. Um, and what you do is you wrap a piece of paper or cardboard around the aerosol can, you wind it on, and then you slide it off when you're all done. Um, 
uh, and I was looking around for correct diameters and I, I found this old pill bottle um, and uh, it's 1.75 inch diameter and it's this thin plastic so I think I can just leave it in place. I won't have to remove it so I can just form the uh, form the inductor right here on this piece of plastic and everything should be okay. I don't think the uh, I don't think the properties of this plastic will affect it at all. They will a little bit, not much. Um, so what we're going to do here is go with the 1.75 and then it, we need to figure out exactly which frequency we're interested in here and there are various channels here, uh, radio stations from 1.0 1,026 uh, kilohertz up to maybe 14 kilohertz up here and you need uh, you need less windings for the high frequency and more windings for the low frequency um, so I should try to figure out which which radio station here would be a good one to go for um, some of the some of the big channels here are actually down around 800 kilohertz, but there are some up up higher. So I think I'll just go ahead and and uh, we'll just make it for a for a high one here. Um, there's also taps along the way. It, it has you add f four taps along the along the along the winding it, that you can put alligator clips on to adjust things and you have that adjustable capacitor so um, seems like it's tunable so I don't know if it's really all that critical or not uh, let's see more and less so I mean if we have taps why do we need a fancy coil winding? Why don't we just put all the all the windings on here, and then we go along the different taps and figure out which one which one works for us? So I'm a little bit confused about that. Let me uh, let me investigate it a bit more. I've got some uh, tape, and we'll tape the windings down, and round, round, and round, and tape the other end down. Um, some people pointed out that you could use uh, n clear nail polish to uh, put it down with. Uh, might do that too. Um, yeah, let me uh, let me start winding a coil. All right, there we go. Uh, I have a uh, I have some taps here, and uh, here's the gozinza. These are the gozatsas, and I uh, have it on a on a coil here. So. I think it'll do the job, so we will continue. All right, well, it seems to work. Um, I have uh, I have the uh, ground uh, connected to the ground on my uh, on my Rigel uh, power supply, so that's connected to ground. And then I've got the antenna. I was going to string it out, but I thought I'd just hook it up to my HF antenna. So I have it going outside. And it's picking up uh, what I think it, it th that it's it's not very selective. Let me say that it's going to pick up the very loudest thing, and it's not going to be very selective in tuning. You you can tune it a little bit, but it's pretty narrow, and so really the way that I have it set up, it's only receiving one station that's like super super powerful next to me, which is the Bollywood station. <laughs> I think I've showed that before. So I think. I think according to the uh, sheet here, you basically have to tune it to one radio station is what it looks like here. It really doesn't do much else. So um, wherever you are, um, you kind of have to tune it to the radio station that's the one that's the easiest for you to pick up in that particular area. I don't think you're really tuning in, tuning in much with this thing, but it is a... Uh, 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 a simple radio. Um, it's catching, it's catching the uh, uh, one megahertz signal that's coming from the Bollywood station, and it's rectifying it with the little, uh, with the little diode. And um, yeah, there you go. So if you want to build a uh, build a crystal radio, but, uh, this one is uh, from from Whiskits by Spiratronics. 
I don't know if I bought this on eBay or I bought it on Amazon or something, but if you search for it, you'll, you'll find it. Not a sponsor. Um, Wizkits.